doing what she likes. Good morning, it's time for today's AM Minnesota program. And we are gonna be talking about the Rice County Fair that starts the day after tomorrow, right, John? <laughs> Maybe not quite. <laughs> not quite, but it sure feels that way. <laughs> well, it's kind of fun to visit about what's going on at the fair about once a month till we get a little bit closer to the fair. But a lot of folks maybe don't realize how much is involved in putting on a great county fair. And oh, by the way, in case you didn't recognize that voice, that was John Dvorak, who's the, the manager of the Rice County Fair. Well, thank you, Jerry. Uh, good to be here. It seems like uh, it was just yesterday that uh, we were having our wrap-up show and, and finishing up the fair. And uh, lo and behold, you know, it's uh, halfway here between us and uh, it's right around the corner, it seems like, it's just how time flies. Well, I remember visiting with you once. You, you kind of catch your breath for a week and get everything finalized for the previous fair. But actually, when some of the different shows and exhibitors that want to come back, you book them actually before they leave. So you're booking at least a year out, sometimes more even. Sometimes, you're right. Uh, uh, you know, I'm fortunate. I have a good group of vendors that... Uh, uh, we know we've got some vendors that have been coming to the fair for almost 30 years or past 30 years. Um, it seems like most of the food vendors that are there, uh, all of them want to come back year after year. Uh, so that, you know, makes my job a little bit easier because, you know, I know I can count on these previous vendors that we've had in the past. Uh, and they usually tell me before they're leaving, you know, hey, we'll see you next year. And, and, uh, <laughs> and so I know that their spot is... Uh, going to be taken up by them and uh but i have a few uh, uh open spots that uh you know we're going to uh, probably try a few new vendors um you know i always like to have something that i don't have at the fair presently uh just to have a good variety of, of well it's kind of nice to have your basic standards there all the time but then always have some it, new things exactly and then you never know you know you get somebody that's going to try something new and they get into it and, and find out, you know, this isn't what they really want to do. And, and, you know, sometimes they go by the wayside and, and uh, that's happened a few times. Uh, you know, people a book without remembering when our fair is and all of a sudden they're at a book to go to another fair. So, uh, but, you know, it all balances out and I think we have a pretty good variety of food that comes back to the fair. Uh, same with our uh, vendors, our novelty vendors. Um, you know, I've got some novelty vendors that uh, like coming to our fair. They come back year after year. Explain and, uh, more what you mean about novelty. Well, so you know, the uh, yeah. t-shirts and yeah, the okay. uh, keychains and, and those type of wares, you know. Um, you know, your face painters, your tattoo uh, airbrushing, uh, you know, you name it, it's all out there, you know. Can we get a tattoo for John for this year's mm -hmm. Rice Conference? Yeah, we could try that. Maybe we just start off with a one that we could wash off after the fair just to make sure he likes it. I'm always amazed at what they, somebody can come with, come up with new to put on a stick too. That's why it seems like it's fun to check out. That's that's fun and you know and, and, and you gotta, I give a lot of credit to a lot of these vendors is because uh, they are constantly um, trying to come up with different ways and new ways to uh, improve things, uh, improve their boots and you know they know that they got to keep up with the times and uh you know uh, we're fortunate uh, uh temple concessions you know they've come up with some gluten-free foods you know so there's uh, gluten-free foods out there for the people that uh you know want to go that are gluten-free uh which is a big thing uh you know it seems like uh, a lot of the things that are going on and you know we've worked closely with the uh, minnesota board of health is you know they're they're calling it healthy fares, you know, and what can we do out there to provide uh, an arrangement of uh, healthy foods for you, you know, so you're not just stuck eating the deep fried food, you know, that, that you are out there able to purchase foods that are healthy for you. And so that's coming on big too. Like a nutritionist, I used to interview once in a while, all things in moderation. So a little bit of fair food is okay, but then have a little bit of healthy fair food. <laughs> That's right, but uh, sometimes when you're at that fair, it's it's kind of kind of tempting to stay away from the healthy foods. <laughs> <laughs> Not us. 
Last yeah. time I checked, uh, pork was pretty healthy, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not that we mooch any pork from anybody we might know. But. That's right. That's right. <laughs> anyway, John, if you can stand by, we have to take a break for the markets, and we'll continue with today's AM Minnesota the manager of the Rice County Fair. John, I think we maybe did a reminisce before the market break. We all kind of missed the fair. Wish it would be a <laughs> week after next. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, it's a, it's, it's a good time, and... Uh, you know, it really, uh, I give a lot of credit to my board and, and, and the people, you know, that want to keep the tradition of agriculture going in, in Rice County. Uh, you know, agriculture is a is a big part of Rice County, and, and um, with times changing and, and, and farms getting bigger and bigger, it seems like, you know, we have less and less uh, agriculture activity that goes on at the fair. And, and, you know, we got a good group of people here that try to keep everything involved, and, you know, when you look about it, you know, everything about the fair, you know, agriculture is, is a big part of our fair. And, uh, you know, it's an important part of the fair and an important part to, to keep, you know, people that informed on what's going on and what better way to do it than at the fair. I think the key is right there, keep people informed on mm -hmm. what's going on. So few of us are actually involved in production agriculture, but everybody that visits a fair needs us about three or four times a day. Well, exactly I think so. they probably like to eat. <laughs> I, I agree with you. And, you know, I was just uh, at a um, fundraiser here last Saturday night. Uh, 4-H Federation Foundation was, uh, they had a big fundraiser and they had a speaker there. And, and you know, it's alarming. You know that uh, study show there's 58% of the people, the population that don't know where their food comes from. They think that you... It, it just comes from the grocery store. That's right. It, it mysteriously, you know, appears on the on the grocery sh shelves, and and you know, it's not just food, but you know, people have no idea, you know, where does wool come from, and where do the, you know, everything come from that our clothes are made out of, and and you know, that's a big part of a uh, uh, big part of the fairs, you know, is keeping people informed and educating the people, and educating the people that you know we're not harming the animals, that we're treating the animals fairly, and that we're treating them with respect because you know that's our life that's their livelihood and, and you know and so to keep that in front of the public you know that you know hey we are doing it right and, and uh, you know that's a big part and, and what better place to do it than at the fair yeah, and especially the, you know the 4-H tie into that mm -hmm. with they can see how the animals are cared for uh, the commodity groups farm organizations are taking the opportunity to be at the fair kind of mm -hmm. explaining what's involved in production agriculture so I think we are stepping up to the plate. We have a ways to go, but we are getting better at it. I think we are, and uh, you know, there's always room for improvement, and we always try to do that. And and uh, you try different programs, and excuse me, the state comes up with different programs, and uh, and it all, you know, j just a matter of putting everything together, and you know, trying to make it a successful and and you know an enjoyable and also an educational experience for the fairgoers. Let's talk a bit about a program that started five years ago, maybe, the Rice County Agriculture Hall of Fame. But, boy, this is what county fairs are all about, to celebrate agriculture. Great partnership between the Fairboat Chamber of Commerce, Agribusiness Committee, the Rice County Fair, the farm groups, the commodity organizations. We get everybody in and serve mm -hmm. them a free breakfast and have the program. Should mention too, special thanks to Doug Gilbertson over there at their New Stride Agri Center, and also we see Randolph, Farmington, Cannon Falls. Did I miss one? But anyway, Doug stepped up and said, We want to permanently sponsor this program at the fair. It is, and then you know, we're just so grateful that we have individuals like Doug, you know, to, that want to step up to the plate and do stuff like this. And uh, we can't forget, you know, uh, Art that uh, Matson that uh, spends a a lot of time putting this all together you know he does a great job with it so you know the two of them you know uh, just keeping people informed and, and you know there's a lot of people that were here before you and I that started this <laughs> even and, though we're old there were still even a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> that's right uh, you're a little bit older than me so I don't uh, feel thanks. so bad yeah. <laughs> but I mean you know it's just so nice to recognize these people you know that that actually you know you call them they were pioneers you know yeah. they were the ones that that uh, way back when, you know, um, set an example, or, or they were the, you know, the the forerunners on, you know, how what kind of changes do we need to make to to make agriculture sustainable here in the county, and and uh, it was, you know, through their trial and errors that made 
the rest of us better. Yeah. The great thing, exactly what this is all about, that we find out about some of these great people in agriculture that mm -hmm. were pioneers in the field that have kind of been forgotten about. But there was one year we were inducting, uh, uh, I can't remember his first name, but it was Lashbrook. He was a Holstein breeder mm -hmm. from up by Northfield. And Larry Tandy came because he, you know, he's from Steele County, but his passion is Holsteins and purebred Holsteins. And he came to the program and talked about what a pioneer Lashbrook was, and that something like 80 or 90 percent of all the Holstein cows in this country have some genetics tracing back to this herd in Faribault County by Northfield. That's right. Well, if it wouldn't have been a program like this, we never would have known we about. We wouldn't it. have. Yeah. No, because you know we find out things about people that uh, we never knew that they were responsible for. You know that they had that input, and so that's why I think it's a great program. Uh, you know, and it's with every program, I'm sure you know that we uh, probably should induct some people that haven't been nominated yet, but you know, that's why uh, it'll be on our that's website. That's why we're here. talking about that's it right, right now. So. Exactly so, and you know, the applications are going to be on our website. Uh, I know the applications uh, just came out, uh, and as soon as our website uh, person gets back uh, from her vacation, you know, we'll get these applications on the website. And you know, if you know somebody that's out there, and, and you know, by God, let's nominate them. Let's get their name out there. So if they don't make it this year, we've got that name for next year. You know, where eventually, you know, uh, we can get those people recognized and and get them the recognition that they deserve being part of. And their of families sometimes. Exactly you know. so. Exactly and, so. Uh, Art did drop some off here, and if I can take the liberty of read, it's it's not like it's a ten-page application. A single page nominating form, but there's only six ca six different things. Uh, impact influence on agriculture, county, state, and national. Leadership in agriculture, county, state, and national. Length of service to agriculture in the community. Examples of character, ethics. Other relevant contributions or accomplishments of this nominee. And then three references that knew the individual. Exactly. So it's, it's not like it's going to take you pages and pages mm -hmm. if you got some ideas get a hold of art over there at reliance bank and pick up a nomination form i think they are also available at the federal chamber of commerce office i've yep. got some here at the studio mm -hmm. and as soon as tara gets back from her warm weather vacation i assume they'll be on the uh, rice county fair website i hope she's getting a sunburn i hope so too because yeah. not that we're jealous i know, jealous she's, I know she's down south and so yeah. yeah right not that we're jealous but uh, i just hope that you know Every time she rolls around while she's sleeping, it just kind of remembers. <laughs> <laughs> but all kidding aside, if you know someone or thinking, mm -hmm. you know, talk to Art about it, and, and he's very helpful too. He's yeah. been around for a while. That's a nice way of saying Art isn't quite as young as he used to be. But he helps track down some of the stories and, and more information too, because I know there are a lot of individuals out there that should be inducted into the Rice County Agriculture mm -hmm. Hall of Fame. And the other reason I like talking about this, KDHL covers a pretty big territory, this is a challenge to other county fairs to get something like this going. It doesn't have to be identical. Mm -hmm. We kind of stole the idea from the Steel County Fair, mm -hmm. only they did an agri or a Livestock Hall of Fame. Right. Well, we decided we wanted to more encompass all of agriculture crops. We wanted to include those involved maybe in agribusinesses or extension mm -hmm. or even radio. That's not to say that we're right and Steel County's wrong. We just decided to do a little different a little differently. But it's still the same idea. It is, it is. And you know, one thing, you know, people need to remember too is, you know, the person doesn't have to have a background of living on a farm. I mean it could have been a veterinarian yeah, that, that exactly. provided services to agriculture that, that helped and, and mentored a lot of a lot of young farmers that started off back then. Uh, it could have been somebody that uh, was an implement dealership or, or FFA anything. FFA advisor. FFA <laughs> advisor, exactly so. So, you know, the, you know, agriculture is such a, a wide variety of, of different titles uh, today. And, and, you know, so it, they didn't have to be involved with, you know, turning over the soil and planting. You know, there's, there's other ways that you can get involved in agriculture, and a lot of these people did. And, and, and there are a lot of people that uh, we have on the uh, board or on the Hall of Fame, you know, that were just those uh, type of individuals. Type of individuals yeah. 
they maybe weren't involved in production agriculture, but yet they were. Maybe they were providing services and inputs and whatever. So at any rate, make sure if someone pops in your mind, uh, you let Art Matson know about it. That's right. Let's get back to some of the new things at the fair this year. Anything pop out that you've kind of got coming new, a new act, a new show? Uh, pre we pretty much have the same lineup as we've had in the past. Uh, we've got a few... Uh, there's a children's act coming back that was at our fair for 10 years or so and we they went to another fair and decided they wanted to come back with the Mitchell marionettes oh, I don't know if you remember them mm -hmm. but uh, they are coming uh, back to the fair uh, we're glad that uh, you know we could bring them back and that they had an opening for us um, they're just a great great family type show entertainment uh, they have a completely different uh, program that they're going to offer. They have something new, so uh, we're excited about that. And, uh, you know, we have a lot of kids. I uh, feel a good variety of uh, entertainment for the kids. You know, we've got uh, Juggler coming back this year. We've got a musician coming back. Uh, so, uh, you know, we'll have uh, Ronald McDonald coming back again this year. So there'll be plenty of uh, opportunities out there, you know, for the children to enjoy themselves. Oh, and that reminds me, don't we have Kids Day and we'll Kathy Cap help yep. a lot we with that? We have Kids Day coming back day. and we have uh, Daycare Day, again, that, you know, where daycare companies can come back, to, uh, come to the fair. Uh, and so we're trying to improve on those uh, type of, of uh, days. Uh, we have our uh, senior citizens, we'll have a day for the senior citizens on Thursday again, you know, where we can recognize our senior citizen of the year. Mm -hmm and that's always a big event and uh, hopefully you know the the weather cooperates with us and it's not too hot or not too cold and that weather's just right you know so we can get a lot of uh, people that come to that and we'll have a good uh, lineup of entertainment coming for them uh, so you know there'll be something out there for everybody at the fair you know and, and who'd, you, who'd you put in charge of the weather this year was that uh uh, we haven't picked him out yet. Oh. We're take, we're still taking interviews because uh, <laughs> uh, it was me last year, and I don't think I did such a hot job last year. So I'm taking interviews for somebody to be in charge of the weather this year. Wait, did, did we get a couple days of rain? I'm trying. It wasn't bad enough that I. Remember. I think we had more humidity, and some hot, oh. humid weather than we did. Uh, so you know, I guess I kind of messed up there, but. So you pass it off to somebody else. I'll pass else it off to somebody else. That's right. <laughs> the free entertainment in terms of the bands like the white side walls and some of those that have been so popular what's going on there this you year? know uh, the white side walls have been uh, a f almost a fixture in the fair for the last past years and then they like coming back and we like having them so we're bringing them back again on okay. thursday night uh, great uh, great entertainment and they uh, have such a variety of uh, music that they play uh, back in that early, uh, you know, the 50s and the late six or l late 50s, early 60s. That's when music was music. That's when music way. was music. Yeah. Just yeah. in yeah. case you didn't know. <laughs> uh, you know, it's kind of funny and it's kind of great because you know there'll people that'll come by and they'll put their lawn chairs up there. They'll be there at four o'clock in the afternoon claiming their territory with their lawn chairs. So uh, they just uh, great uh, entertainers and they they do a great job. Uh, so we're glad that we're bringing them back and we're glad to have them back. On uh, Wednesday night, we are, um, Doc Hildebrandt is going to be performing. Oh, the so, fiddle! <laughs> yeah, so, uh, you know, we're tr trying to just... Um, That's what's fun about a county fair, though. Mix in some local talent, passion exactly. for things, with some of the other shows that come around, and that's what makes it so special. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, you know, he's got a, a pretty good uh, reputation here in Faribault, and I think there's a lot of people in Faribault that uh, would like to come out and listen to him, and so... I just want the people to have an opportunity to come out and, and enjoy the fair and, and listen to some of this music that they can play. We were talking about the Agriculture Hall of Fame. We better back up to the very beginning of the fair. Fair Queen contest. Yeah. I assume that that's going to be off and running. Kathy Cap was usually helped with that in the past. and I forget who else helped Kathy, but anyway, there are a number of people that helped put that on. That's exactly right, and, and Kathy does a good job with it, and so, uh, you know, girls in the back of your mind, uh, you know, think about it. It's it's a great experience. It's a lot of fun, and uh, you know, we'd love to have uh, as many gals as we could to come out and buy for that uh, crown. Should explain though that the Rice County Fair Queen and Royalty have to be the pie contest judge with Jerry. So yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah. there is some downside to that's right. There are some downsides, but. Uh, 
I don't know that has that's, a downside. That, but. That's assuming that uh, they're <laughs> going to let me be the pie contest judge again. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> you know, that's. I'm glad you like to do it because you know I'd sure hate to upset a pie baker. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that's what it's all about, though, having fun. That is, and and we sure do have a lot of fun there. And and, and but getting back to some of our uh, free entertainment uh, on Friday evening. Uh, We've got uh, Brad Boyce coming back, and he's the Elvis impersonator. Oh, and he's he's been a, that's always before. popular. Mm -hmm. That's always popular, and uh, uh, believe it or not, uh, between Brad Boyce and the White Sidewalls on our Facebook uh, page, you know, those are the two acts that people ask for the oh. most. Uh, so uh, Brad had a couple years uh, where he didn't come back, and, and so we decided that, uh, hey, uh, people are asking for him, and it's been two years since we've had him back, and so we are going to have him come back on Friday night. So looking forward to that. And then on Saturday night, you know, we'll wind it up with uh, Sherwin Linton again. Uh, he'll come, and, you know, uh, he's the next best thing to Johnny Cash, I think, and uh, he's a big tribute to Johnny Cash, and he does a great job. And... Um, you talk about you and me being old. <laughs> He's getting up there in age, and I just hope that uh, when I get as old as him that uh, I can have a strong voice like mm -hmm. he does because, boy, he can sure perform. You mentioned requests on your Facebook. Mm -hmm. Here's the challenge to folks, too. If you're visiting another county fair, maybe even a state fair, and you see something that you really enjoyed, whether it's something that kids enjoy or adults, send the word on to you guys. and may, It might be too late to get them there this year, mm -hmm. but... You put it in the back of the file for thinking about next year. That's how we can get new and fun things to the fair every once in a while. Yeah, and that's that's exactly right. And, and uh, you know, uh, I look at uh, a lot of these things, and, and uh, you know, I, I share people's uh, enthusiasm about an act that they've seen. But, uh, you know, uh, unfortunately, our budget is so big, and uh, depending what some of these acts charge, you know, uh, that plays a big part of it, uh, you know. And a lot of these, I'll take for instance uh, the Mitchell Marionettes. Okay, they are out of California. That's where they reside. That's home. Wow. That's home to them. Uh, but they've uh, been up in the Minnesota area for the last 18 years, and they just love coming to Minnesota. So what they do is, you know, they try lining up county fairs so they can go from one county fair to the next county fair, and, and so. You know, a lot of times when we are looking uh, at booking an act, uh, and it's a fairly good size act like the Mitchell Marionettes, and there's others out there, you know, we'll ask and talk to other counties, okay, who are you getting? And possibly, you know, can we fit that into that that uh, performer schedule to come from one fair to the other? A little colluding going on A little there. bit, <laughs> but you know, it just makes it a little bit, you know, Rather than them coming up just for one fair. One week, you know, maybe they can spend two or three weeks up here. And right. then right it costs each county maybe just a touch less then. So, you know, uh, I get a lot of calls that way. And I get a lot of calls from performers saying, well, you know, I'm in this fair. And can you fit me into your fair? I'm just trying to figure out my route. And so if it works out, fine. And if not, uh, you know, and then, you know, you try uh, mixing in. Uh, you know, we've got Tui the Juggler coming back. He's from Faribault here. Uh, he performed for us last year, did a great job, and so uh, there again, you know, um, local talent, you know, we're trying to, um, you know, utilize as much local talent as we can, and, and on a big scale as Tui is, it does a great job, and, and so we're glad that uh, we can get him to come back to the fair this year. We should mention, and you kind of alluded to it, that some of these acts are a little expensive, you know, cost money to get them here, the sponsorships that you get, talking to the communities and different businesses, and mm -hmm. they'll say, I'll sponsor this, and someone mm -hmm. else says, I'll sponsor that. And that's why we can have such a great free fair. It doesn't cost you 12 or $15 to get into the gate. Exactly, exactly. And, and you know, sponsorship is a big part of uh, our budgeting for the fair. And uh, here in the next week or so, uh, I'm going to go out and, and, and start uh, visiting my previous sponsors and, and visiting other individuals you know if they could sponsor uh, an event at the fair and uh, you know it's 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 a great way to help out the fair it's a great way to be part of the fair we haven't mentioned the grandstand yet usually i'm so busy i don't have a lot of time to worry about what's going on in the grandstand other than the truck and tractor pull if that doesn't come back i'm going on strike <laughs> <laughs> they are coming back uh, they'll be here on saturday night uh, Sunday afternoon uh, we'll have our demolition derby we'll end up the fair with the demolition derby and that's always a great uh, 
uh, way to uh, end the fair. Uh, these guys come out there, and boy, I tell you, last year they put on a show for us, uh, all these individuals, and I take my hats off to them because, uh, you know, these guys spend a lot of time and a lot of energy. And put a their car money, together to car wreck it. To, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly so, but they, they sure do put on a show for us, and we're just so fortunate that uh, we've got a great group of people here locally, and, and, and some people come from, you know, out of uh, Faribault area, but in fact, uh, I had a guy last year, he calls me, and he was at a fair at another county, and I believe he was at Sandy County, and they had an early demolition derby, and uh, he got knocked out early, and so he calls me up, and he says, uh, I'm coming to your demolition derby, can I still get in? I said, well, if you're here by 6 o'clock, I said, I would think that you could get in. And uh, he said, well, he says, uh, I'm just coming through Minneapolis right now. And this was like at 5 o'clock. And I kid you not, he pulled in just underneath the wire, and, and we got him checked in. And technicians, you know, they make sure everything was Yeah, safe. there's a lot of safety regulations yeah. with the demolition and, derby. And uh, he ended up coming in and winning his class. So, <laughs> uh, you know, he was fortunate that uh, he could make that work for him. But, uh, you know... Uh, this what I'm just trying to point out here is, you know, there's a lot of people that are passionate about this and, you know, they do whatever they can to come out and give us a, a great show. Speaking of giving you a great show, it all starts with beautiful fairgrounds, well-maintained. Mm -hmm. should say a special thank you to the uh, Rice County Commissioners because technically all that land property is owned by the county, right? And exactly. they're kind of in charge of it. And, while we rely on a lot of other things to run the fair, they do help with some of the funding, don't they? They do, so. is, and they, they give us a sum of money every year to dedicate towards maintenance, and, and we do do that. And uh, so, uh, you know, we're, I'm thankful that, you know, we do have a, a set of commissioners that support the fair. And, um, you know, without them, uh, you know, we'd have a hard time existing. Uh, not a thing, you know, that my maintenance crew that's out there wouldn't be for them, you know, uh, they do such a great job getting the buildings ready and getting the grounds ready prior to the fair and then during the fair, you know, keeping it up. And you don't know how many comments that I uh, hear about, wow, what a great way to have, uh, you know, such a clean fairgrounds. Well, it's all organization and it's all cooperation. John, we've only got about 45 seconds left, but you're going to come back kind of on a monthly basis till we get closer to the fair, right? So we exactly. kind of keep the folks informed on what's going on and get them excited about the Rice County Fair. And all the volunteers. And uh, here's another challenge. This sounds interesting. You have a passion about something? Talk to somebody at the fair. Get involved and uh, you can help out. Yeah, we're always looking for volunteers and, and we won't turn anybody away. And remember, you know, the fair is this year is July 19th through the 24th. Thanks for stopping by, John. Thanks for having me. John DeVore, the Rice County Fair Manager. You are listening to KDHL Radio Tampa.